clay is a non-Newtonian liquid. By wedging it, it becomes more fluid. Centering is the first step after wedging. In part of centering, you can cone the clay up. And when you cone it up, you gotta cone it back down. That really helps center. Then I open up the clay, the, this lump of clay that's been centered. And I'm making a bowl, so I pay particular attention to the bottom, the transition of the bowl, the round inside of the bowl. Make sure I got enough water. I'm bringing the clay from off of the wheel head vertically. And I go right up, just right to the top, and I don't go past the top. And every time I do a pull, I, or almost every time, I'll, I'll compress the rim a little bit, I'm trying to get the most out of the clay, and make the most volume I can out of the amount of clay I have. Now to shape the inside, I'll use a rounded rib. And this rounded rib does a really good job of, of making the shape that I want. Don't worry about that wobble because when it's, the wheel's not spinning, you won't even see it. After about a day or so, it's ready to trim. And you trim a foot, so I'm trimming a foot here. You can also refine the outside of the bowl a little bit if you like, if you need to. Simple foot. Now let it dry on a shelf until it gets bone dry, and we put it into a kiln for a bisque firing. Bisque firing takes the clay up to a certain temperature, a high temperature, and removes most of the water out of it. And you end up with a, a durable or semi-durable porous piece of, of bisque ware. Glaze is suspended solids in water, solids are minerals and oxides, and since the since the bowl is porous that's been bisque fired, the solids will stick to the outside of the bowl as it absorbs water. Now it's ready to be fired into a glaze fire. And voila, all of the chemical water has been removed and you end up with a, a stone or glass-like piece of finished pottery.